What's up everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, I'll go over installing an electronic turn signal flasher, specifically in a 1980 Jeep CJ5. This is required when converting to LED turn signals. I have received multiple requests to make this video, as a result of my previous video, to switch your CJ over to LEDs. So, here we go. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe for more how-to and review videos. Now, let's get started. Let's quickly go through how the original thermal flasher works, then how the electronic flasher works, and why you need it for LED lights, and how to install it. When you activate your turn signals, electrical current is sent to the light bulbs, and they would just stay on. However, the turn signal flasher has a little switch inside, which repeatedly turns on and off, resulting in your turn signals blinking. This is the stock thermal flasher. Let's open this up and check out the switch. So here it is. This leg is connected to this tab. And this leg is connected to this thin piece of sheet metal. The first leg is also connected by means of this little tiny wire to the resistor on the back of the sheet metal. It's called a thermal flasher because as the sheet metal thermally expands and contracts as a result of the electrical current that the light bulb draws through the resistor, it moves to open and close the switch, creating the blink. And this works as designed for the stock incandescent light bulbs. However, when switching over to LED light bulbs, this is not the case. There are some issues. With the thermal flasher, LEDs can do a lot of strange things, from hyper flashing to not working at all. LED light bulbs require much less current than incandescent bulbs, which does not provide the required resistance for the thermal flasher to operate. To solve this issue, an electronic flasher is required. Note that an LED bulb can be used with a thermal flasher if a load resistor is installed in parallel. This will mimic the resistance of an incandescent bulb. However, it'll negate the power efficiency that you gained by switching to LEDs. Not ideal, but it is an option. In general, the electronic flasher contains a circuit board with logic to control the blinking. There are a variety of electronic flashers. For this specific vehicle, United Pacific 90652 has successfully worked for my vehicle. And that's the flasher I will be installing in this video. This flasher is a drop-in replacement for the factory 552 thermal flasher. It has two terminals like the stock flasher, plus an additional ground wire, which the stock flasher does not have. Looking at the electronic flasher, it is polarity sensitive. This leg, labeled with an X, must be connected to the 12 volt supply in the fuse box. Here is the fuse box, and this is where the turn signal flasher goes. Note that there is an exception. Big thanks to David Walker, a viewer of this channel, for sending me pictures of his 1985 CJ7, so I could show this flasher location. Some 1984 and later CJs don't have the turn signal flasher located in the fuse box. The fuse box will have an empty spot for it, but it is not wired, and the flasher is located in the wiring harness, hanging by or behind the parking brake. It should have a yellow input wire and a red output wire. Now back to a typical CJ fuse box. Next to the turn signal flasher is the hazard light flasher, and an electronic flasher is required here as well. From comments and feedback, not all CJ flasher receptacles are wired the same. Sometimes the 12 volt supply is on the left, and sometimes it's on the right. It can be checked with a probe or multimeter. Turn the ignition key on. Ground the negative probe of the meter. It just needs to be in contact with bare metal. This'll work. And test the two terminals to see which one is the 12 volt supply. For me, it's the left terminal. To easily accommodate this without having to check ahead of time or chance being incorrect, I recommend United Pacific 90652, which includes a reverse polarity base. So it will work in either situation. Depending on which side is the 12 volt supply, you either use the base or you don't. However, if you want to try to save a couple dollars and predetermine your polarity requirement, United Pacific 90650 does not include the base. 90652 is actually just 90650 plus a base. The base cost a couple extra dollars. Another option, if you're having polarity issues or trying to save a couple dollars, 
is to rewire the back of the fuse box to match the polarity of your flasher. But in my personal opinion, the base is worth it to ensure that the polarity will not be an issue if you are uncertain. Install the flasher with the correct polarity. I personally do not need the reverse polarity base. Last is the ground wire. This must be grounded, but this is a new requirement and there are no existing accommodations. I extended the wire and grounded it to the firewall with a screw. Good to go. So, the most frequent question that I received was where I grounded the flasher. I just grounded it to the firewall. But, I hope the rest of this information was helpful. And with the electronic flasher installed, now the LED turn signals are operating properly and good to go. And, as always, thanks for watching. I hope you found it helpful. Subscribe for more how-to and review videos. Drop any comments below, and I'll see you in the next video. I can't even fit in here. It's ridiculous. I just need to connect this ground wire. Here we go. Oh yes. This will be the ticket. That ground wire can't hide now. I'm coming for you. There you are. I can get you with both hands now. Done. Piece of cake. Easy. LED lights, here we go. Oh yeah.